What's up, guys? So it is Wednesday, 7.45 a.m. Just got done with PT, as you can probably see. Uh, today we did some sort of CrossFit training with like tire flips, um, log lifts, overhead presses with logs. It was actually a pretty good workout. Took him back to college, because in college we had this one lieutenant who was our instructor who kicked our ass in PT, and we did that kind of stuff. But I had my typical breakfast, overnight oats. This is how you know overnight oats are done correctly. If you can flip them over and the spoon still stays in, it is solid. Uh, what I've been doing differently is using the chocolate fat-free, sugar-free Jello mix, and uh, instead of almond milk, I'm using that Fairfield double the protein milk. I used to make this in college. I used regular milk, and it always gets better with like regular milk or this Fair Fairfield stuff, better than almond milk. Uh, and it just gets awful with water, so don't try water. But eating this, have a pretty long day ahead of me. I have a lot to do. And then after work, I'm going right to the gym. Um, and then I have a very, very good baked French toast recipe for you guys. It is a apple pie French toast that I made last night. Absolutely the best thing I've ever made. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. So ever since I made my first baked French toast recipe, you guys have been asking for more and more variations. So this one I decided to do an apple pie baked French toast. And honestly, it turned out better than any of the ones I made before. And the key to it is how you cook the apple. So I diced up one apple, threw it in a pan on medium heat, and I added probably a quarter tablespoon of coconut oil. You can really just use spray if you want. Uh, and then add a little bit of water, some cinnamon, and some apple spice seasoning, which you can find really anywhere. I found it in Walmart. Uh, you want the apples to be soft, but not too mushy. Uh, so when you bite into it, after it's baked, it's just, it's not too crunchy. And then I sliced up six pieces of cinnamon raisin bread, added one egg, then I added those apples, half cup of milk, and three tablespoons of sweetener. I use stevia, you can use Splenda, really whatever you want. Uh, but I really like the way this milk is really turning out anything I make. Uh, overnight oats, this French toast recipe. I used to use almond milk, but I'm finding that using this Fairfield double protein milk has worked wonders. So I baked it at 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes and then topped it with some sugar-free maple syrup. Try this one out. I am sure, guaranteed, you guys will enjoy it. So work is over, it is like five o'clock right now, probably like 5.15, and typically I don't go to a gym on post. I never go to a gym on post, uh, but I really don't feel like driving to the gym right now because my gym is like 15 minutes past where I live, and it's just been some late nights. So I need some carbs, so I'm doing Lifesaver gummies. By far my favorite gummy can gummy candy. My favorite gummy candy. And guess what, no one else on YouTube beats these, so makes me special. And what I did today is I threw some in my flight. I don't, I couldn't even tell you why. I could not even tell you why I did this. It was spur of the moment. Completely impulsive. But I'm hoping some of the flight soaked up some of those gummies. Nope. Probably just sitting in the bottom. So I'm going to eat this stuff. I can't record at this gym, obviously. Um, so I'm going to show you clips from last night's workout which was chest and back. Uh, and I used my new program on the bench routine, made a PR of 330, which was awesome. Made a PR on deadlifts too, five reps, five sets. Uh, my last like three sets were at 575, which I've never done before, so huge progress. So uh, we'll see what I do there. This weekend, I'm trying to look for a food eating contest. I keep telling you I'm gonna do one, and I keep backing out because I haven't found the right one yet. So I'm, I'm really picky and I've watched like the Food Network my entire life and I know there's some good ones in Texas. So I'm going to stop talking and I'll show you some clips from the workout yesterday. So this is the first workout uh, using this rep scheme on bench and super happy with the results. Now prior going into this workout, just in the gym, not in competition, my PR on bench is 315. In competition, I did 302.5 just because I lost like 19 pounds for the meat. Wasn't feeling good. Uh, I wasn't comfortable with the commands at that point. Just didn't end up very well. 
Today I hit 330 and I hit 330 pretty easy. And like I talked about in my last video, this new rep scheme I'm doing, I'm doing bench, squat, deadlift. This rep scheme once a week and then my other workout doing those exercises, it's gonna be a five by five or more volume. And after I did bench and deadlifts, I went into a lot of volume work. So I did some stuff, uh, accessory work for upper chest, some incline bench press work, uh, some cable flies, pull-ups, barbell rows, stuff like that. So this is really like the meat and potatoes of the workout. Um, and it's that 10, 5, 3, 1, 1, 1 rep scheme. Overall, I felt really good though. And this workout was after sleeping like three hours because I had staff duty pull that 36 hour shift. Uh, so I'm really happy with the results actually. And then here is my PR of 330. Easy. Went up really easy. Uh, happy with my foot positioning. Really happy with my deadlift lately. Uh, that guy in the background, he's the guy I've been talking about who has been helping me with this new rep scheme in this program. Uh, his name's Dale. He has records. His deadlift was like 800 pounds. Uh, he's working with a few people in the gym right now. And they're in there deadlifting like six, 700 pounds. And he's talking about taking in the worlds. Uh, I'm nowhere close to that, but he has helped me dramatically. And I don't know if you guys do the hook grip on deadlifts. Recently started doing that and my thumbs are torn up, like bleeding during my workouts. But the hook grip works amazing for me because it allows me to just not focus on holding tension with my arms or just letting them hang free. Uh, and then all that weight, I'm just pulling with my back rather than focusing on pulling with my arms, which I think was a problem previously. Uh, but today I had a 20 pound PR on my five rep deadlift, working with 475, super happy with it. Super happy with it. Um, so the numbers just keep bumping up with this new program and focusing on strength training, which I haven't done in years, has really actually improved my physique as well. And I remember talking to Bryce Lewis and he was like, Nick, if you do powerlifting, you will improve your physique. Completely agree. I feel denser, bigger, uh, feeling 3D, if you know what I mean. Getting 3D. So I'm midway through my workout right now and the sun's setting, so that's like why the huge glare is here. Like literally midway through my workout. But you know I've been doing these gym thoughts lately. Uh, where I write down what I'm thinking in the gym and then I talk about it later. And there's this one thing that I write down almost every time I'm in the gym, but I don't touch on it because I'm afraid of how you guys will react. So I'm just going to get it over with and put it out there because if I don't record it now, I never will. And it's that even though you see people post all the time that if you work as hard as possible, you can have anything you want. And guess what? That's not true. Because some people, as you know, work their ass off to get what they want and it never happens. Some people are just unlucky, you know? Some people just don't get what they want. And what I gotta say about that is, there is a risk you need to assume. And my commander talked to me about this a few months ago, and he was like, Nick, there's a difference between a risk and a gamble. A risk has a perceived negative outcome, all right? A gamble, there's no like weighed decision. You're just throwing it on the table and guessing red or black. A risk is something that you know could go wrong but you're willing to accept that and mitigate that because if it does go right, it's that much greater. So like, to give an example, when I was dieting for my bodybuilding competition, I didn't know if I would win or lose a show. I didn't win, uh, and that's not why I did the show. I did it for the journey. I had more fun in those 16 weeks of prep than I did on stage for an hour. And like what I'm trying to say is, who cares if you reach your end goal? Who cares if you ever end up looking like a model on a magazine or deadlifting a thousand pounds? As long as you had fun during the journey, as long as it was fun to you and it meant a lot, that's all that really matters. Because I'm tired of seeing people post, if you do this and you do that and you work your butt off, you can have anything you want. Because we all know sometimes it just doesn't happen. But you gotta have fun with it. And I have fun with this whole thing. Even if I never reach the goal I want, if BPN never blows up, if this channel never hits 100,000 subscribers, I had a blast doing it and I appreciate it so much. I just had to get it off my chest because I know if I didn't right now, I never would.
Where I belong.